How Russ and I, we've known each other since we were little kids, but we connected again later on in life and talked about what we both wanted to do, and it was pretty much the exact same thing. Yeah. And it was this style of restaurant. We both left Oklahoma. Worked in other places and other markets where food was just really, you know, a thing, for lack of a better term, you know, where just the focus was about the food, about the quality of the food, the freshness of it, variety, changing things up, you know, just really being, you know, sort of catering to foodies, essentially, you know. If you want to offer the best food all the time, the best way to achieve that is to do what has now come to be known as the whole farm to table sort of practice, which is just getting your hands on the best ingredients that you can all the time, offering them when they're at their peak of freshness. And the only way you can do that is to do what we do, which is to bring product in all the time from different sources, change the menu every day because, you know, you can't just run the same thing if it's that seasonal and just have to, you kind of have to change it up all the time and know the sources, be familiar with the places and the people, you know, where the food is grown and who are growing the food. It's just kind of the way to do things and it's the way that it was done forever up until, you know, right around World War II when we kind of got away from that. It's not really anything new, it's just the way that we think is the best way to yeah, source good food. It's how both of us, when we left, always cook. You know, for me, cooking in Europe, that's just what it was in Germany. It was, this is available now, so this is what we're gonna cook. Yeah, so like, upcoming at Ludovine this week, so we got a whole pig in Thursday. So now you'll start, some of it's gone into the menu. There's tomahawk chop, which is like the largest pork chop you've ever seen in your life. We'll be going on all of our seafood, we serve seafood, it's not from Oklahoma, obviously. We get fresher East Coast fish than the West Coast does, and fresher West Coast fish than the East Coast does, because it gets here faster. Um, we have Wagyu beef that's grown, that's literally from 40 miles away, that's some of the best in the country, literally. Um, we have that, we'll have our charcuterie. We have a lot of fruit, so you'll be seeing that kind of implement its way into the menu. Um, I can tell you what we're serving Tuesday, I can't tell you what we're serving Friday. Right. And that's just the way the restaurant ones. That stuff will be in the beginning of the week and we'll probably be done with it by Wednesday. And, yeah. and then coming up for the weekend, it'll be brand new again. And that's the fun part of it. Well, we'll kind of work with what we have for, for tomorrow. And, the, and then there'll be another farmer's market on Wednesday. So we'll go there and stock back up with whatever might be offered. The most consistent thing on our menu, which still shocks me to this day, is we have roasted bone marrow on the menu. And that's something we decided to put on the menu and we ran it for a little while, and we can't take it off the menu. Yeah, the we sell so much bone marrow. People come for it, they want to have it. We're the only ones, you know, that serve it. When we haven't had it, we literally have very upset diners. What I think a lot of people don't realize, the business side of it, so you have, your, so it's a natural product. So prices fluctuate on produce and meat and animals all the time. So if you have a menu that has a price that never changes, you're now locked in. So we're actually able to fluctuate with everything. So we always go to a farmer and say, we want to make sure you're okay. We're not going to try to price gouge you. So what do you need to charge? And honestly, it was kind of exciting for us to be the first to offer it. I mean, I feel like I knew it's like, it's just a matter of time. Somebody's going to do it. Someone's going to beat us to the punch. And we got to actually kind of be the first guys to do it, which is, you know, exciting. fun and exciting and sort of an honor. Yeah, and scary. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and also that question of is it will it why hasn't will it, it worked? Will it fly? Yeah, exactly. Maybe there's a reason that no one has done this. Maybe someone has tried it while we were away and didn't realize. And there was a learning curve. You, you have to be willing to understand that you can't you can't make everybody happy all the time. Your first couple months or years of being open, it's just that sort of filter process and, and sort of establishing your clientele. And now we have. We're largely regulars. One thing that still is exciting about being a part of the change and how much Oklahoma City grows, like our Friday night, almost all new people. Yeah. Which was so cool because Oklahoma City is so spread out that people are still discovering and rediscovering their city as it changes, because it's constantly changing right now. So to have all these new people on a Friday night come in, but from where we began to where we are now, now people are like, hey, we're here and we want to try something new. And that's so much more of the attitude in Oklahoma City now than it literally was five years ago when we opened. Yeah. It's completely changed. Right.